I don't think I can date anyone real anymore. Read it. <laughs> My favorite series like ever. Maybe we don't hate each other after all. Hello, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. So today's video is super highly requested and it's book recommendations. If you didn't know, I love reading. Like I spend so much time doing it. It's one of my favorite hobbies. And I thought I would share some of my all time favorites with you. I do personally prefer reading like fantasy and dystopian and just any books that aren't like realistic fiction because I like escapism. Also always my favorite books tend to always have, I guess, a mixture of good romance, good plot development, good character development, diversity, and a good setting. So that's what I prefer. And also, before you read any of these books, make sure to look up the age ratings and or trigger warning. Anyway, let's get started now. I've talked enough. So this is my bookshelf. I have a lot of books. I love collecting books. And here are my young adult favorites. So the first one is The Shadows Between Us. This just like, look at the cover. It's so pretty. It's a standalone. I read it in one day because I am not okay. <laughs> Basically, I am not the best at explaining plots. So you may want to look up the plots to supplement what I'm saying. But basically, this book is just a young adult high fantasy novel. The protagonist, Alexandra, wants to court the king marry him, kill him, and then take the kingdom for herself so she's the queen. I really like the main character. She's very strong and independent. And I kind of like how she's sort of an anti-hero instead of the like chosen one trope because I don't like the chosen one trope too much. And this is just perfect enemies to lovers. Quick read. I love it. Would recommend. Then the next books, this is like one of my all-time favorite series. It's my comfort series. I started reading these back in like 2012. It's basically the Shadow Hunter series as a whole, but especially the Infernal Devices series, which is this series right here. This whole section right here is the Shadow Hunters Chronicles. There are literally so many of them, so it's a little bit overwhelming at first. Basically, if you're interested in the series, which I'll explain the plot of in a second, look up how to read the Shadow Hunters Chronicles because that will help you tremendously. Anyway, this one's one of my favorites. These take place in Victorian England, which is like the mid 1800s ish. Basically, they're the Shadow Hunters whose job is to kill demons and there's also like vampires and werewolves and all that stuff too. I think it's really cool that these take place in Victorian England. And since there's so many books in this series you can really really get into it. Also one thing I forgot to say about the Infernal Devices series is that this has the best love triangle I have ever read. <laughs> and then the next series is the Cruel Prince series. I really like this series too. It's also enemies to lovers. It's high fantasy. The main character is somewhat morally gray and she's just a strong independent woman and she's just cool. Basically this mortal girl Jude and her twin sister get kidnapped as children and they're forced to live in the high court of fairy and then Jude wants to fit in with the fairies even though she's human. If you've heard of this series before people talk a ton about the romance. There is some romance but I honestly like it because there's a lot of politicalness in it and I think that's kind of fun and I like plots. So if you're looking at this for pure romance Mm, maybe not, but if you're looking for like plot and character development with a sprinkle of romance, then this is perfect. Then we have another standalone, and this one's sort of contemporary-ish, and it's They Both Die at the End. Hang on, I need to read the description. Okay, basically, in this alternate reality, there's this company that calls you 24 hours before you're gonna die, and they're like, what's up? You're gonna die today figure out how you want to spend the last 24 hours of your life. Okay, cool, bye. So then this guy and this other guy get the phone call saying you're gonna die today and they have to figure out like how they're gonna live their last 24 hours. So this book only takes place over the course of like a day, which is kind of cool. And the two main characters in this book meet each other through like Tinder, but like it's Tinder for people who are dying. It's a little bit really sad. So if you're looking for a contemporary book that'll make you kind of sob your eyes out, that also has good representation, read it. And then if you're into dystopian, here's a good recommendation. Where is it? The testing. This is really kind of similar to the Hunger Games, to be honest. If you liked the first Hunger Games book, especially the scenes where they're in the arena, then you will really like 
like this book. So as I said, it's dystopian. So the new government chooses like the generation's leaders through this process called the testing, which basically takes the candidates through this dark sort of elimination testing thing. And the main character is selected for the testing. So it's really good. I like the main character a lot. She's just like, doesn't really make bad decisions, which I can't stand when main characters make stupid decisions. So not too much romance in it, but there's a lot of plot and there's a lot of stuff going on too. So yeah. <laughs> and then the last YA books that I have to recommend are the Grisha verse series. So these books are literally so good. There's two separate series and recently like a week ago Netflix released the show that's based off of both of these series. If you haven't seen the show it is amazing. I binge watched it in an entire day and then I watched it again. I prefer this series but you technically don't have to read Shadow and Bone before you read the Six of Crows series. So the first series which is the Shadow and Bone series. These like complicated fantasy books are so so hard to explain. I'm just gonna read the back of this. Orphaned and expendable, Alina Starkov is a soldier who knows she may not survive her first trek across the shadow fold, a swath of unnatural darkness crawling with monsters. But when her regiment is attacked, Alina unleashes dormant magic she didn't even know she possessed. Now Alina will enter a lavish world of royalty and intrigue as she trains with the Grisha, her country's mal magical military elite, and falls under the spell of their notorious leader, the Darkling. He believes that Alina can summon a force capable of destroying the Shadow Fold and reuniting their war ravaged country, but only if she can master her untamed gift. Yeah, so that's this series. The Six of Crows series, it's heist time. If you're a fan of the found family trope, this is perfect. Basically, these six criminals have to break into a government building and steal something. It's really good. <laughs> And now for new adult books. First, my favorite series like ever, the Throne of Glass series. There are literally eight books in this series. The series is technically categorized as YA, but I would definitely think it's a little bit new adulty-ish. Oh, I just love this series so much. First book starts out with an assassin who has to come to the castle and she can win her freedom if she defeats 23 other people in a competition and she'll serve as the king's like royal assassin. So that's the first book. It gets way more complicated after this book. Also another really strong female lead. Selena is literally me and what I like about this. She's super extroverted which you don't see too often in these sorts of books. And she also isn't like I'm not like other girls. Like she's an assassin but she also likes food and likes getting dressed up and likes trying on fancy dresses and likes reading and there's a lot of good dialogue. Also all of the male characters in Sarah J Maas's series. I don't think I can date anyone real anymore because her fictional men have set the standards way too high. <laughs> And then also Sarah J Maas's other series is A Court of Thorns and Roses. I also like this series. I like Throne of Glass a little bit better because Throne of Glass is a little bit more plot based. But this is also a good series too. And then the only like full contemporary book in this video. Red, White, and Royal Blue. I really liked this and normally I don't even like contemporary books but I like this one a lot. I want to be best friends with Alex Claremont Diaz. I think he would be the perfect partner in a group assignment in college. Anyway, basically, the son of the President of the United States and one of the princes of the UK have sort of like rivalry. They kind of hate each other and then they're forced to be together and then they're like, hmm. Maybe we don't hate each other after all. So it is a romance. There's also a lot of politics in it. It's really good. I like it a lot. And then we have Circe by Madeline Miller. This book I actually read for a women in literature class in high school. If you're a fan of Greek mythology, I think you'll really like this. So Circe is a goddess and she gets banished to this island. She appears in the Odyssey and a bunch of other like tales. It's like a feminist Greek mythology book and I really like it. And basically it tells like certain myths and stories and stuff from her perspective. It talks about Odysseus's journey from her perspective, the Icarus myth, and Theseus and the Minotaur, which is really fun. I really 
like Greek mythology books. And then finally we have The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. I just finished this and I really liked this. In this book, the protagonist Addie in like the 1700s, she makes a deal with the devil and the deal is she can live forever and do whatever she wants and have this sort of freedom. But the catch is that nobody will ever remember her. She won't be able to like say her name to anyone and she basically will be invisible. And then she meets this guy and he remembers her so it goes back and forth from like her past in like the 1700s, the 1800s, the 1900s, whatever, and present day. It's a nice standalone. <laughs> And then I also thought it'd be fun to end this video by including some of the books I intend on reading really soon. So if you are just looking for more books to read that I hope are good even though I haven't read it, these are pretty much all fantasy books. So Cinderella is Dead, Kingdom of the Wicked, The Priory of the Orange Tree, which is a huge book. <laughs> like, mm, that is... That is large. The Bridge Kingdom duology, which I think is a lot like Throne of Glass. These Violent Delights, which takes place in 1920s Shanghai, so I think that's super cool. I love historical fiction fantasy books. And The Song of Achilles by the same author who wrote Circe. So those are some of the books I'm looking forward to reading soon if you're just looking for some other titles. But yeah, that's it for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed these book recommendations. Comment down below what your favorite book is and thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed it please give it a thumbs up subscribe to my channel turn the notification bell on follow me on instagram and on tiktok and i'll see you next time bye